friends and foes, welcome to Brushwork Podcast. My name is Stephanie Scott, and today we're talking about how to set up a good studio space. A good studio space makes for good art. A good studio space makes for great creation, it makes for ease of working, it makes for a sacred space that is for your artwork and for you as an artist. I've had four major studios in my life, and I have learned many things about what makes a studio good and what makes it work against you. Over the course of this episode, I'm going to talk you through all the different studio spaces I've had, plus some of the in-between spaces I've had during school and such, and what I like to see in a studio, and also what I like to avoid in a studio. Let's go way, way back, back when I was in high school. Now, before I really get into what makes a good studio space good, I want to define what I mean by studio space. A studio typically means a room that is designated exclusively for your art. But when I talk about it, it doesn't necessarily mean a room. Maybe it's just a desk, like my first studio. When I was in high school and I was taking art classes along science and math and everything else I needed to, you know, graduate, my studio space, quote unquote, was simply a desk in my bedroom. I had a three by two and a half foot desk and it had a couple of drawers and I just had a uh, little basket that had all of my acrylic paints. I had a little cup with my brushes and another little cup that I used for my water. My studio work sink was actually my bathroom sink and much to my parents' <laughs> continued strife, I kept pouring acrylic paint down the sink. And uh, that leads us to step one of things that you shouldn't do in a studio space. <laughs> Learning how to clean up after your materials properly ensures that your studio space will stay good for a long time. For example, I don't know if anyone's told you this, but don't pour your paint water from your acrylic paint down the sink because acrylic paint is plastic and if you put it down the sink, it'll stick to your pipes and eventually they'll get clogged up and then you have to use something like Drano or some sort of like hard chemical cleaner to break down the paint buildup. Step number one, be responsible with your materials. Dispose of them properly. That's going to keep a good studio space rolling. So I'm a teenager. I'm in my bedroom. I've got a desk that has my art supplies. I've got like a bucket of pencils that have all been given to me over the years by various relatives and they're cheap and they're dirty and they were doing the job. In my first studio space, I primarily used it for my art classes in high school. So I had a lot of sketchbooks that were filled with, you know, drawings of anime girls and also studies that were for my homework for my wonderful art teachers that I had then. And then I also had my shoe painting business. Y'all know what Converse are? Chucks? Canvas tennis shoes with laces? They're fabulous. And my very first art job where I actually made some money was painting canvas shoes and selling them from that little desk in my bedroom. People would come to me and they're like, hey, I want some flowers on some canvas shoes. And so I would go buy a new pair of shoes and then I would paint them some flowers and then I would sell them. I made maybe $25 per pair of shoes, even though they were expensive. <laughs> it was a great learning experience. And I think I made maybe 40 pairs of shoes before I gave that up and continued on. I really loved having a st studio space in my bedroom. I loved having a desk where I could have all my art materials and, you know, whenever I sat down at that desk and I got to work and I got to draw and I got to do my homework, it was wonderful. It was really great. And, you know, it's, it's nice to have a desk that it can get covered in paint because that's its job. It can get messy with charcoal because, again, that's its job. That's its business. Item number two of our list of great studio things is let it get dirty. Let it, let the studio be unpristine. I know a lot of people who are artists who have like really immaculate studios and that works for their system. And they've been like cultivating that for a while. But when you're a beginner, let, let it get messy. And it's, it's freeing and liberating in a way. You get to express your emotions. You get to work through your adolescent <laughs> struggles. <laughs> and um, it's, it's quite super. In that studio space, I had many pictures on the walls. I had postcards from my friends from their travels. I had pictures of artists I really admired. I had stacks of art books that I had, you know, borrowed from the library and have conveniently forgotten to return it. Y'all, 
the other day I was going through my library that I have in my current studio and I found a library book from when I was a teenager that I just never returned. And out of curiosity, I went, <laughs> I went online. I'm not even a part of this library system anymore, but I went online and I was like, I wonder what the fines are for this book, for this little art book. And, uh, unfortunately it wasn't some big sarcastic number of like thousands of dollars of fines that I had because they like capped it. It's like after like 40 bucks, you're, the book's just yours, <laughs> but it was kind of comical. So, you know, that's the, it's kind of magic that, that desk had. I spent many hours at night, not sleeping, procrastinating on homework, doing drawings. And I, I think very fondly of that studio space. I had a window that I could open the shutters to look out amongst the trees that I grew up around. I have a picture of that studio and maybe I'll make it the cover of this episode because it's so it's so precious. As I grew up and I graduated from high school and I started my time at Cornish College of the Arts, I still worked from that desk, but I was also able to work at that school. For the first three years of school there, you don't have your own studio space but you do have lockers and you do have big shared communal spaces where you can do your work basically at any time. And so while I still use that desk in my bedroom because I lived at home for most of my college time, I also had all these shared spaces where I could collaborate and I could see what other people were working on. And if I wanted to go to my school at 9 p.m. at night and paint for a couple of hours, that was an option. At Cornish, they have these giant drawing racks for all the paintings. They have just rooms and rooms with like file folders everywhere. And you could store your artwork there. You could store your materials there. And that had its own kind of magic, but it wasn't my studio space. One thing I learned from that studio space was the importance of ritual. The importance of coming into the space, having all your materials in your little art tote and pulling out your homework for the day. Maybe it's a self-portrait drawing. Maybe it's a painting of some horses, which is something I often painted at Cornish. Maybe it was a landscape study. Maybe it was something else. And, you know, going into the shared space, pulling out all your materials, working steadily for two or three hours, and then putting it all away, putting it back, putting your painting in the drying rack, washing your brushes, making sure the space was tidy for the next person. The studio spaces that we shared they weren't pristine. They had a manager who was there whose job was it to, you know, make sure all the soaps were in place and all the towels were there and all the materials you need to keep a studio going was there. But it was also a, it was a way of community service towards other people's art that had a profound impact on how I run my studios now. I love having a well-stocked studio at, at art school you're you're paying for all the materials, right? And at any point, if you need nails, if you need hammers, if you need tools, if you need wood, if you need canvas, it was all at your disposal and you used as much as you needed. Of course, you bought your own paints and you bought your, some of your own materials too, but having that sort of community space where if you needed something, you could get it, I, I really love. And whenever someone comes to me, one of my friends, and they're like, hey, I need some art supplies, I never hesitate to give it to them because of that spirit of community that showed up at the school. Even if the students didn't like each other that much, there was always that respect for other people's artwork and the study of artwork. It's, it was great. It was super. In my last year at Cornish, I got my second studio space that was just my space, but big enough that I was able to share half the room with another person. And all of the senior studios were all together in the same building. So again, that sense of community space was there, but we each had our own little our own little rooms. We could put in desks, we could put in trunks with lockers, we could put in all sorts of easels, we could put in all our materials. If you wanted to shoot a music video in there, you could. If you wanted to <laughs> take a nap between classes, you could. It was accessible 24-7. And having that space had the intent of working towards one big project which is my next item on the list of good studio spaces, is having an intention for what your work is doing. With that studio space, it wasn't a broad studying of how to technically make work, but it was our thesis project. We had a big show at the end of the year 
for the seniors. Every person got to show their work. That is a culmination of a year's worth of painting and drawing and whatever people wanted to make. When you went into the senior studio space, you could feel the audacity. You could feel the drive. You could feel the <laughs> frustration at times. You could, feel, you could feel the energy of wanting to make something really, really cool. And that just like feeds your brain in a way that makes you want to make really good art. It was the kind of collaborative space where if you were having a problem, your classmate would always be there to help you. There was always someone there working on something, making a cool project, and everyone's work was so different. There was never a fear of someone stealing your idea because, because we were such, everyone's such different people that that just wouldn't happen. And, and having that cool communal studio space was just a wonderful gift to have for a year, almost a year. I made the biggest paintings I've ever made in that studio space. 15 feet wide, three major panels. I was really into mazes. My whole thesis was about illusions and secrets and paintings and mazes. And I made my own font to go with it. It was very cool. I, I, I called my font the devil's tuning font <laughs> because every letter was a little illusion, optical illusion that you could figure out, but also still read together. Something interesting happens when an artist leaves art school because you have such an intense community around you for four years, basically, pushing you towards learning your craft, learning your trade, and getting really good at it. And then you graduate and suddenly you're on your own. I think that sudden lack of support means a lot of artists don't continue being artists. When I look back at my classmates, I think only three people are really pursuing art still, and the rest of them are doing other things, which is sad to me. It's sad to me, but hopefully that's different now. It's been about 10 years since I was at Cornish, and I think they have a very different system now than they did then. <laughs> at least I hope they do. <laughs> but that leads me to my, to my next studio, my third one. My third studio I rented. It was about six months after I graduated from Cornish, one of my friends was like, hey, Stephanie, do you want to rent a studio with me? She was a classmate from school, and I thought, yes, I want this feeling again. I want this feeling of camaraderie, of going towards something cool, of making together. And so we found this building that rents studios to artists and other business professionals. Um, it's called Active Space, and I stayed there for seven years. I had three different studio spaces within Active Space, that building. I had one that I shared with a friend for only a couple of months before I realized, oh, I actually need a lot more space than, than what my friend and I had um, found together. So I ended up getting my own space and I rented there for a long time. What was great about that studio space that I had for, for seven years, seven years straight, I learned about solitude and I learned about how to be alone, but not lonely. And I think that's also good in a good studio space. When you go into your studio, it is an act of solitude. It's also an act of creation, but it's an act of being alone with your creative spirit and making something from it. I needed the balance from the camaraderie and collaboration of art school, and I needed to feel the total flip side of being alone and not easing to it, into it with another person, but being alone with my artwork and still making things with the rituals I now knew how to do. Active Space's place were perfect for me. They are popular in Washington. I think they have a couple of buildings in Oregon. Um, and they have a couple different buildings all around the state. If you're, if you're in the Washington area, look them up if you're looking for a studio because they do good stuff. Basically what they offer is a, uh, a gray floor, and some white walls, a working sink, utility sink, and usually a window. <laughs> it's sometimes it's a garage door instead. But this this like 12 by 12 room that I rented for so many years was the birth of my abstract paintings. It was the place I went to when I was upset with my roommates after I moved out of my house, <laughs> my parents' house that is. It was the place I went to after breakups, it was the place I went to when I had a new coffee shop show and I was feeling so excited. It was the start of my YouTube channel. It was the start of me doing social media. That that place, that seven years that I had at Active Space was 
the birth of my career. And it was having that place that I could go to 24-7. It, had, it was secure. It had good safety measures. <laughs> it was a haven for any of my work. And it made me want to go to work. What was interesting about that place, and which is my next point on the list of good studio spaces, is that when you are an artist and you have a blank wall, you have to learn how to decorate it in a way that encourages you to make art. In my first studio, that desk in my bedroom, I had little postcards on the wall and things like that. But in this third space that I had the, on my own, I had to make sure the lighting was really good. I put up little like fairy lights around the ceilings, and I made sure that I had a good sound system. I had this amazing window that brought in a lot of natural light, and I really used that to my advantage. I would paint to it. What was also nice about it is that the surrounding area was easy to be in. It, it was really walkable. You could go to a grocery store. So if I ever needed lunch, I could just go there and go back to work. I liked that it had, it was easy to get to from my apartment at the time. That was was also great. So, so both of those factors, that accessibility of getting to the space, which was way easier than my space at Cornish, that made me want to go there more often. Another thing to make a good studio space is to keep it tidy. When you're on your own and you have no one else collaborating with you to keep the space clean, it's up to you. So I kind of established rules for myself, uh, an expanded ritual, if you will, of how to keep the studio tidy in a way that promoted better artwork. I started keeping it cleaner. That meant for me, I was sweeping at the end of every session because I have hair and it sheds and I have paint bits and they fall on the floor and I've got, you know, little paper molecules all around the area. <laughs> keeping it clean that way, cleaning the floors always made me want to come back into the studio the next day. I would put down butcher paper on my tables. So I always had a really clean surface to lay my paintings on. It also was able to like clean up glitter really fast if I ever used that. <laughs> For me now, that's gold leaf. It absorbed oils from my fingers or sometimes if I spilled some oil instead of getting into the wood of my desk. I learned a good storage system in that studio. I had a lot of artwork from my student days at Cornish and also from before in high school. And I needed to put it somewhere that wasn't just my parents' house, you know? I needed to put it somewhere that was safe, that I could archive, and also that it wouldn't get in the way. So I learned that. In the fourth studio I had, I take that to the next level, but we'll, we'll stay in the third one for a minute. In my third studio space, my rented one, I also learned how to orient things so that making art was easy. On my main desk that I had in the middle of the room were my paintbrushes and my paint, things I reached for the most often. They were always tidy, you know, not necessarily clean, but like tidy and easy within reach. I put things that I didn't use more often, like charcoal, colored pencils, things like that. Those went on bookshelves that I kept in the studio. I didn't keep very many books, but that that system of what is easiest to get is the things I use the most often. It's a really good rule that I use even today. Another thing I started doing is bringing plants into the studio. Just having a little jade tree, some snake plants, maybe a cacti, having something to take care of, to bring a little fresh air into the studio, that kind of like weekly ritual to water them and check them and take care of them also brought me a sort of responsibility that I had to go to the studio. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't perfect. Sometimes I would have weeks and weeks, especially when I had all those part-time jobs where I, I wouldn't go to my studio. But when I brought a plant in, I made sure to get in there because I had something to take care of outside of my artwork. So even when I was avoiding artwork, having something that was alive and dependent on me, that was a great key. So, you know, maybe put a plant in your studio. <laughs> After I got out of my last studio, my, my rented one, I moved into my current studio, which is a just a dream to have. I definitely stayed in my rented studio for probably two years too long. I was getting to the point where I would make a fairly large painting and then I would be standing there in the middle of my room figuring out, okay, now what do I do with this? Because I was making more paintings and I could store them. I had paintings leaning on the walls, leaning on every corner of the desk, just in stacks, kind of hung up way up high where I couldn't even reach it. It was getting super cramped. 
So after I realized that my studio space was getting really cramped, I came into my fourth studio. My fourth studio is, it's a dream. It's magic. It's so great. It's a detached garage that's been refurbished. And the previous people who, who were in this space had, you know, had a nice carpet down. They had like a whole mother-in-law sort of thing going on. They lifted up the ceiling so the, the you know, old rafters of this garage could be taken out and everything was painted white and they put in some track lighting and most importantly they put in two skylights i'm delighted every time i go into this detached garage it's it's so great so when we first moved into it i it had this like carpet that ants were eating and so my boyfriend and i we ripped out everything and it had this beautiful concrete floor that was just covered in paint. I was like, somebody has used this as a studio in the past because there's paint marks everywhere. And there is nothing I like more than going into a brand new studio that is slightly used because then I'm not afraid to, you know, muck it up even more. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it's great. If you go into a new studio and the floors are perfect, I recommend just dropping some paint on it just right away. Just like mess it up. <laughs> It'll keep you from being precious. <laughs> This studio space has gone through many iterations. I'm in my second year here and it's got a couple of windows, it's got the skylights, it's got a nice door, and it has really big wall space. I stopped using easels in my studio because of this place. I now paint on the wall. I have this little like easel kind of set up on the wall where it's just like a bunch of nails that hold the paintings. And I, I'm able to make bigger paintings and actually step away from it more than six feet. The dimensions of this place are 15 feet by 20 feet and it's it's magic. I've gone through a new iteration of good studio practices within this place. Because I have this detached garage, I'm able to come to the studio more often, which means I get to paint more often. And with this space, I was able to start streaming on Twitch, which is magical because I have internet access. I've never had internet access in any of my studios before because I always thought it was a distraction and it was a distraction. But with this place, I have internet access that's reliable and I can stream my artwork, which is so cool. <laughs> if, you're, if you're interested in that kind of social media work, having like hardwired internet in your studio is, mm, it's a go-to. Soon I'll do a, an, an episode on, on my whole Twitch setup because that's very interesting to some of you. One thing I've started added to the studio space is proper fire safety. In my last three studios, I just let my like oil-soaked rags just be on my, the, <laughs> the tabletop or in a trash can. But, but now I have like a fire box for all my flammable materials and like a fire can for my used rags at the end of the day. And it's a lot safer. I also have a, a, a fire extinguisher. I've got a first aid kit. I've got a ladder and like proper measuring tools. <laughs> I have all the tools I need to build canvases again, which is very exciting because I, I couldn't do that in my last space. It was just simply too small to do comfortably. And in this space, I can have a bigger table to work on, which is cool. I have new shelves that hold all my material, plus things I haven't really tried using in a while. I just got a set of calligraphy pens that I can't wait to try out. Should be interesting. In the studio, I also have way better storage. I kind of alluded to storage solutions in my third studio um, like 10 minutes ago. But in, in this space, I actually bought a storage rack that has, it's, it's for like postal mail. <laughs> but with this rack, I'm able to have my big canvases, my new things and already painted stuff safely out of the way. So I'm not like accidentally hitting it with my foot as I walk by. It's marvelous. <laughs> The one downside of a, of a garage studio is that the floor is slightly sloped downward because garages are designed to drain water. So I joke that everything is a little bit crooked in here. <laughs> and it is, it is. If you put a marble down on the floor, it starts rolling. But you know, you gotta work with what you gotta work with. Nothing is perfect. In this studio, I realized that my previous cleaning routine wasn't quite up to par. In my In my third place, I had like, Okay, we're going to sweep and we're going to tidy things. And because the space was so small and I only had a few things in there, that was easy. But with this ex this garage space, I have to be more diligent about cleaning. In fact, I'm looking around my studio space right now and I'm like, oh, yep, it's time for a tidy. 
I need to be more diligent about putting things back in a place that I live. Like, everything needs to be better organized. Nothing is super clean, per se. Like, it's not, like, gross, but, you know, <laughs> dust gets in more corners than not. And I have more plants in here, so that means also, you know, some soil here and there. <laughs> but having more organization and, like, spots for things, like, oh, okay, this is where all the big rulers go, and this is where the um, different glues I use for my panels go, and this is where my bag of paints goes, and things like that, that's very important. This space is also well ventilated. It's very easy to open a window and get some fresh air. It's very easy to turn on the air conditioner and get some fresh air, and so I'm never at risk of any fume damage or things like that. But most importantly, what makes a good studio space a good studio space is that it's really inspiring. I've got a cool sound set up. I've put up some cool LED lights underneath my shelves to light up the things. All of these things, which were fairly inexpensive and I could pay for with money that I've made from paintings, which is so cool. <laughs> I don't think that'll ever not be novel. <laughs> I've got a little bookshelf next to my desk here that has art books that I reference all the time for my paintings. I've got prints from my friends up on the walls. I've got a calendar that has my year written out with all the things I need to do for all my shows that I've got coming up. Every time I come into this space and I see the lights and I see the little bird feeder on the window and I see the paintings I'm working on now and the one I've got up next out in the open, I, I feel thrilled to be in the space. And I think that's really inspiring and important for a good studio space. If you're looking at your creative space and you're like, this isn't inspiring, I don't want to, I don't like being in this space, I recommend drastically changing it and like take out everything from it. Put things you love in the space. I don't mean go and buy cute containers or whatever, but put things that have sentimental value into, to you in the space, like a little figurine or, you know, postcard size prints of your favorite painters. Make it, make it interesting to look at because that's, that's good for your brain, which is good for your artwork. That's all I've got for you today, friends. I want to hear about your studio space. Will you send me a DM and tell me about what your space looks like and how you've set it up? Or even better, send me pictures because I want to see your studio. If you want to see pictures of mine, I will have them up on Instagram at stephaniescott.art um, and I'll tag Brushwork Podcast there. Thank you so much for listening. Make good choices, everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye now.